Hello, thanks so much for coming and welcome to our presentation. Today, we're going to talk about how to achieve data-driven application growth using Firebase. My name is Alex and I'm an engineering manager on Firebase Predictions. Hello, I'm Yan Li, a software engineer on Firebase Predictions. So let's talk about how Firebase can help you as an application developer grow a successful business. We all know that building a great app is certainly important, but it's only half the battle. You want to grow a user base, retain your users, monetize them so you can grow your business. So today we're going to talk about a few key points in your journey. Firstly, how can we objectively measure your application success, both in terms of industry standard metrics and events that are unique to your application? Secondly, We'll be looking at ways to make changes to your app's look and feel, as well as behavior, without having to do a release to the various app stores. Thirdly, we'll look at ways to predict user behavior using machine learning. And lastly, we'll be able to test those changes to ensure that there's been significant impact and that the changes we've made are not having any unintended effects. So let's start with a simple example of an application that you could build and then we'll adapt it to some more sophisticated strategies. So let's consider your new app, Sparky's Adventure. In this app, you have decided to offer in-app purchases to the user while you continue to develop features to make the app more interesting and appealing to a wider user base. As your app develops and our team becomes more sophisticated, we're trying to run some tests to help improve this process or to ensure the changes that your team makes don't undo any of your previous hard work. But these tests can involve a lot of one-off engineering time, which ends up being difficult to scale. But this is where Firebase can help. Powerful Firebase backends like Cloud Functions, Cloud Firestore, and Cloud Storage allow you to quickly build and scale your application. Firebase also has great tools to make sure your app stays performant and crash-free with products like Crashlytics, Test Lab, and performance monitoring. But Firebase can also provide you with some out-of-the-box solutions that can help you grow your user base, retain your users, and monetize them so you can maximize your business success. So let's say one day Jing, your product manager, wants to test the hypothesis that showing the most expensive items first will lead to more users spending more money per average user session. Well, that's an interesting idea, but it brings with it a lot of questions. What other implications could this change have? How will we measure success? Let's start by using Firebase to get some key indicators for this app. First off, we need to add some analytics to our app to measure the success of our app. Now, the nice thing here is, is that you've already integrated with Firebase, analytics is already up and running. And if you haven't, just by creating a project in the Firebase console and adding the base SDK to your iOS or Android app, you can get analytics up and running without any custom code. And you get a lot of automatic reports right there in the Firebase dashboard on data that's important to us. Things like in-app purchases, user engagement, retention cohorts, daily and monthly active users, and more. All of which lets us get a good sense of the overall health of our app right out of the box. We'll also go ahead and record any events that are important to your application, whether that's people finishing around in your game, visiting the in-app store, starting or completing your in-app tutorial, inviting a friend, and so on. This is all data that we can use later, either in the Firebase dashboard or through BigQuery, to answer questions that we might have about our app, like what percentage of my users are making it through the tutorial? Is level five too hard? Is level five too easy? Adding these events is generally one line of code per event. Back to our original idea. Now that we know that we can measure the success metrics we care about, but how can we implement this change in part of an audience in a controlled way and roll back quickly in case it doesn't work? How can we make these changes without an app release? You can do it using Firebase Remote Config as the primary driver of changes to your app. Now, if you've never used Remote Config before, you can think of it as like a key value store that lives in the cloud. And you can use these values to change the look and feel or behavior of your app without needing to publish an update to the various app stores. The way remote config works is you set up a bunch of values locally in a user's device. Then as time goes on, when you want to change one of these values, you can do that using remote config, either in the Firebase console or using our REST API. 
Then the next time the user starts up the app, we will download these values and apply them on top of the default values. When we ask for a value, you'll either get the default value that we supplied initially, or one of the new values we've downloaded from the cloud. And this is nice because it means that we can have hundreds of values wired up and ready to go through a mark config, but because you're only downloading the deltas, the values that have changed, you don't have to worry about excessive downloads or data usage every time the user starts that. So for instance, if you've gone ahead and parameterized our sort order of the items in the store as a variable in the app, this is something we can update easily through a mark config. You can push our update to the world potentially only for a small fraction of our audience. And if there's a problem, you can simply come back to remote conflict and undo the change that we made. Okay, so you have the change ready to ship, but wait, Jane has had a new idea. Jane is wondering if you can change the sort order to show the most expensive items first, but only do it for the people who have spent money in our application before. Her hypothesis is that this will maximize revenue among your spenders while still enticing our non-spenders to spend money by showing them more affordable options. This is something we can do pretty easily with the systems that we already have in place. When you implement analytics, you have the ability to create audiences. These are users who meet some certain criteria in your app based on triggering events or being assigned to various user properties. And one audience that analytics creates automatically for you is purchases. This consists of anybody who has ever spent in your app. One of the nice features about remote config that I hadn't mentioned yet is that it contains logic that allows you to send different values to different users, depending on their situation. So for instance, you can send different values to your Canadian users, either for a nice localized experience, Sparky's Canadian adventure, or test a new feature in Canada before rolling it out to the rest of the world but you can also deliver different experiences based on analytics data, like whether or not your user is in a certain audience. So you can tell remote config, hey, let's create a special condition based on whether or not people are in the purchasers audience. And then you can tell remote config to change your sort order only for people in this group. And you get to implement Jane's new monetization strategy, all without touching any of the code in your app. And while this makes Jane happy, it also gets her thinking. What if our past purchases tend not to spend money again? Thus, we should focus on ranking expensive items more highly only for future purchases, meaning those that have not purchased but will likely purchase in the future. But can we really predict the future? Yes, you can, with little help from machine learning. And we're going to do this by using five various predictions. Let me hope, hand over to Yan Li, who can teach us how. Thanks, Alex. Yes, with Firebase predictions, you can apply the power of machine learning to segment your users based on their predicted future behaviors. The general idea is that as your users are interacting with your app, the data is getting sent to Google Analytics for Firebase. Once enabled, Firebase predictions will look at your data and learn from the patterns that your users exhibit before they perform certain actions. So let's dig a little deeper into what we do. Essentially, this is a supervised learning problem. The first thing is to come up with the examples to teach the model what it is exactly that we want it to learn. The model is updated every day. So every day, we take the last 45 days of user activity data, reserve the last seven days as the labeling window and the rest 38 days as the feature window. In the labeling window, we figure out what actually happened and give labels to the users, such as turner, spender, reviewer, etc. And in the feature window, we extract features that can represent the user's behavior patterns. The data is separated into training set and evaluation set. We fit the training set into a neural network powered by TensorFlow to train the model. Then we apply the model to the evaluation set to generate statistics about the quality of the predictions, such as precision, recall, accuracy, etc. And then we expose some of these metrics on the UI. Once the model quality is verified, 
we are ready to apply the model on your latest user data to generate prediction scores dynamically. Then you can target them in the fabric products that you typically use, like for instance, remote config. So how do you use fabric predictions? Do you need to go back to university and spend several semesters taking a neural networks programming class? No, you just need to click this button here on the predictions console, and that's really it. At this point, predictions will start the model training and evaluation process for the two predefined predictions, span and churn. So by default, we will predict who will spend money in your app or who is likely to stop using your app. But really, various predictions can be set up to predict around any event you have in your app, like who's going to create an account or share the app with their friends. Creating customized predictions is very simple. You just need to click the Create a Prediction box in the Predictions Console and then provide a name so you can easily find it later and choose a specific analytics event that you want to predict for. Then within a couple of days, you'll start to get the predictions that you can work with. Let's say now the UI shows your submit review prediction is ready to use. By clicking this Explore and Use Prediction button, you'll be able to select the threshold to control the audience size and prediction probability. On this Select User Segment page, you can expand the graph of tech active users. They are sorted from right, from left to right in how likely they are to submit reviews. The probability score is on the y-axis. We can use these blue sliders to select a segment. And as we move the sliders, they, we will see the bars and the data change on the right to give us more information about the audience size that we are selecting. After selecting the segment, you'll be able to choose where to use the prediction with other fabric tools, such as remote config, in-app messaging, and cloud messaging. And that's how easy it is to use fabric predictions. Now, you can leverage the power of machine learning in your app. But Jane starts thinking, what if I want to dive deep into my data, or combine with my in-house data source? or export it to a third-party system. Firebase and BigQuery have you covered. Many of Firebase tools already integrate with BigQuery, including predictions. To export your predictions data to BigQuery, just go into your settings and find the BigQuery integration chip. The BigQuery integrations page allows you to easily manage all of your links in one place, turn them on and off, and get to your dataset easily. After linking your app, dataset will be created for you and visible from the BigQuery UI. From here, you can run advanced queries against your raw and sample data. You can also export or join your datasets with external data sources to perform custom analysis. So going back to Jane's request, we are going to change that condition in remote config to now include users who we think will spend money in the future. Let's change the condition to be based on spend predictions. Then further adjust the percentile of users to be included. For example, only the top 1% of users who are most likely to spend in the future. Hit the save button and then change the sort order parameter value in a way that we think we'll generate the most revenue for these users. Great news, the new sort order for future spender is ready to ship. But Jane starts thinking again, how can we be sure that this has the intended outcome? Even if we saw an uptick in spending, how do we know that it was due to the changes we just made instead of some random chance or some other changes in our app? or maybe a promotion we were running at the time. Many apps have a variety of success criteria. Let's look at ways that you can measure the impact of your changes accurately, as well as considering any unintended consequences of your changes. This is what Firebase A-B testing is for. A-B testing helps make sure that all your decisions in your app 
are backed up by actual data and statistical analysis. So let's try to prove this hypothesis by data by creating an A-B test. Let's go ahead and create an experiment on the A-B testing console. Let's choose to use remote config. In our case, the target audience is going to be users who are predicted to spend money in your app. We can run the experiment on, say, 30% of these users. Then you can tell Firebase that you want to maximize in-app purchase revenue as your goal. Note that Firebase can also check a number of secondary goals. This is very useful for determining the overall health of your app. If you made a change that boosted your in-app purchase revenue but was so aggressive that it lowered your user retention, that would be important to know. So these secondary goals can help you check that. In the variance section, you can add a few different parameters values. Here, you can add, you can have up to seven different var variants if you want. Then you can check back in the top of weeks and see what happens. This is what a sample report might look like. These reports come with a lot of tables and charts, but the most important takeaway is this line here on top of the page, which tells us that for this experiment, we have 99.9% .9 confidence that the variant A, which is ranking expensive items higher for future spenders, will increase both estimated total revenue and user retention. So this is great. We tested our hypothesis using experiments and data. Now let me hand back over to X to wrap up. Thanks, Xiaomei. It's worth pointing out that just about everything we talked about today, whether it's using remote config to change how your app behaves in different situations or changing how your app behaves against users predicted to hit some conversion event. Running an A-B test to improve your in-app purchase revenue or perhaps running a cloud messaging campaign to tell users about your next big sale. All of this can be done by anyone on your team directly through the Firebase console as long as you grant them permission. So once your engineering team has done the work to set up each of these features, your growth team, your game designers, or others that want to help you succeed can run all of these experiments or marketing campaigns directly through the Firebase console. While your engineering team can go off and work on the next big thing. And your new app's monetization strategy gets to go from a very simple provide in-app purchases and keep pushing more features kind of strategy to a data-driven, fully optimized monetization strategy. It creates audiences to get metrics via Google Analytics applies different parameter values to different audiences, applies different parameter values based on predictive behavior, and maximizes in-app purchase re revenue through A-B testing. So I hope you've learned more today about data-driven app development. To sum up, one, we measure our overall app health and set custom measures. We can use Google Analytics for Firebase. Two, to make changes on device without pushing a change through the App Store, we can use Firebase remote config. Third, to predict user behavior, we can leverage Firebase predictions. Four, to prove our success, we can leverage Firebase A-B testing. If you're interested in learning more about anything we've talked about today or any other user uh, application growth related questions, we'd love to hear from you on the door. Thank you.